We are in week two of an ongoing conversation, uh, journey, if you will, uh, centered around asking the question, what does it mean to follow Jesus? Uh, across all of our campuses, we are using this resource, uh, Following Jesus, a Disciples Handbook, as kind of the, uh, the basis for these conversations, what is helping to guide and lead us through asking the question and answering the question, what does it mean to follow Jesus? And as we uh, continue this week, week number two, uh, we're talking today about what does it mean to follow Jesus in, in loving and, and obeying? What does it mean to love Jesus and what does it mean to obey Jesus? I want to read to you this scripture, uh, John chapter 14, verses 21 through 24. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. Uh, these are the words of Jesus and Jesus says this, He who has my commandments and keeps them. Notice that. He who has my commandments and does them. It is he who loves me. Jesus makes a connection between our loving him and our obeying him. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Verse 22, Judas said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus picking right up in verse 23 answers this way. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Notice again, he's continuing this connection between loving Jesus and obeying Jesus. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words and the word which you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. One of the things in my relationship with uh, God and my journey in, in learning to more fully follow Jesus, that's been helpful for me is to take following Jesus out of a religious box, out of kind of this Sunday morning, one hour church experience box that we can put him in, and, and to think about following Jesus in terms of relationship. And for, for me, there's no deeper relationship I have with, with another human being than the relationship I have with, with my wife. I want to give you an example. I want to give you an illustration. If I were to, um, let's just say, all day Friday, all day Saturday, if I were to neglect my wife and kids for the most frustrating game in the world, that is golf, and um, I woke up both days, Friday and Saturday, left early, played golf all day. Let's just say that I played, I don't know, 36 holes of golf Friday and Saturday. And I came home and I was tired and got, got home and I sat down and I ate the dinner my wife made. And then instead of helping her clean the kitchen and do the dishes, I went upstairs and took a shower and then came back downstairs and sat down and watched TV and watched the game, watched you know, a basketball game or a football game. And then whenever I was tired, I just got up and went to bed and went to sleep without saying anything. And, and all the while my wife was trying to care for our kids and take care of the home while I was just doing my own thing, you probably wouldn't say, wow, you're a loving husband. Like, I, I just, I tell you what, Brandon, you love your wife, you serve her, you, you show her affection so well. No, you'd probably say, dude, you're going to need some marriage counseling and you're probably going to need it quickly. On the other hand, if I were to be presented with the opportunity to, let's just say, go on a golfing trip, and I were to say, no, 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 I'm, uh, I'm going to stay home this weekend. My, my wife has had a really long week, and uh, we got three kids, five and, five and under, and it's a lot of work, and I'm going to stay home, and instead of going to play golf, doing what I want to do, what my preference is, I'm going to stay home, and I'm going to help her Friday and Saturday, take care of the kids. While I'm home, I'm going to do the laundry. I'm going to clean and, and take care of any things that she, she needs me to or be helpful to her. And then instead of just eating the dinner, I'm going to help her with, with making dinner if she so desires. And then I'm going to clean the kitchen and, you know, I'm going to give the kids a bath and I'm going to put the kids to bed. And when it's all said and done, I'm going to give my wife a back massage and say, hey, how can I serve you tonight? You know what you wouldn't say? You wouldn't say, wow, you are so legalistic, man. 
Like she's got you lock and key, ball and chain. That sounds like a legalistic marriage to me. No, no, you would say, oh, that's, that's very loving of you. That's, that's what a loving husband who cares for and considers his wife would do who's in relationship with that person. You're, you're loving that person by doing the things that please and serve them. Why is it that we disconnect the dots when it comes to relationship with Jesus? I can't tell you how many people that I have sat down with and talked about this subject of obedience. And, and their number one go-to thing is, well, what about grace? What, what about the forgiveness of our sins? Like, Jesus, just, it sounds so legalistic to have to do the things Jesus is telling me to do. And like, what about grace? I, I thought this whole thing was just me putting my trust in him and believing that I'm going to go to heaven one day and then all the stuff I want to do, it's cool now because he forgives me of my sins. What about grace? My, my response to that question, what about grace, what about forgiveness, is usually what about relationship? This, this thing that we are talking about following Jesus, it, it is not a a, a ritualistic religion, it is a personal and intimate relationship with our Creator that so loved us, He gave His one and only Son, that through Him we might have life, through not just receiving His full and free gift of forgiveness, but through following and loving and serving and honoring Him in obedience." couple conclusions that I'd like to make here in week two. And number one is this, that loving and obeying Jesus, it is voluntary, but it is not an option. Did you know that in relationship to following Jesus, that obedience is not optional? Jesus, he has commands, not options. Jesus doesn't say, hey, guys, there's a couple things that I just, if you're okay with, if it's your preference, if it fits your schedule, if it, if it aligns with your hobbies and your desire, he says, no, the, these are commands. And, and I'm commanding you to walk in this way. However, because we love Jesus, because this is a personal and an intimate relationship with the one who gave everything that we might be fully and freely forgiven and have a life. While obedience is not optional, it is, it is voluntary. You know, if, if you were to go back 2,000 odd years and you were to talk to some, some of the men, some of the women that actually walked with him, that, that were, were, were present when he walked in literal physical form on this earth, it, it, it wouldn't even make sense to them to say that you loved Jesus, you, you were following him, and yet not do any of the things that he, he's commanded you to do. No, for them, obedience, it was voluntary. It, it was their privilege. It was their highest honor to show their love and their affection for, for their master by obeying and living in his ways. It, it wasn't optional, but, but it was a service. It was a high honor to obey him. Jesus he even said in the, the, the gospel, he, he said, can I ask you a question? Why do you call me Lord, Lord? Why do you say you're the boss? You're in charge. You're God. I'm not. You're the only one that can give me salvation. I'm, I'm living for you, yet you don't do any of the things that I ask you to do. That doesn't even make, doesn't even make sense. O obedience, it is, it's voluntary. It's because we love Jesus and we honor him, yet it is not, it's not optional. You might ask the question, well, what is it that, that obedience does for, for me by, by following and obeying him? What, what does that do? Second conclusion or second thought that I'd like to give to you here in this second session is this, that loving and obeying Jesus, it releases and establishes his kingdom on earth. I don't remember who said this, but when I was in Bible college, I heard this quote and just stuck with me. Some, some pastor, he, he said, do you want to see Bible days? Do, do you want to see in your life the things that happen in the Bible actually happen? 
We read about the supernatural power of God. We read about Jesus doing miracles. We read about these things that, that, that happened when Jesus walked the earth and we go, whoa, can you even imagine? This pastor said, do you want to see Bible days? Then simply do what the Bible says to do. Bible days come when we just start following, obeying, walking in the ways of Jesus, in the words and the ways and the will of Jesus. What does obedience do? Obedience, as we simply live for and live in the ways of, of Jesus, we, we follow the will, the ways, the word of God. It establishes God's domain and God's kingdom here on earth and here in our lives. Number three, third kind of observation I'd like to make or conclusion I'd like to draw is this, that, that it allows the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide us into intimacy. Let me draw you back to the, the very, very uh, made-up example that I gave you at, at, at the, the, the beginning of this, this session. Playing golf all day, doing my own thing, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do whatever I want to do whenever I want to do it. And my wife can take care of the home and take care of the kids. And I'm, I'm going to go do what I want to do. Can I ask you a question? How close, how intimate do you think that relationship would be? On, on, on the other side, loving, serving, honoring my wife, do, doing what, what pleases and what honors her, how close do you think that relationship would be? O obedience has nothing to do with whether or not God loves you, wh whether or not you are approved or accepted by him. No, that, that, that was settled in the finished work on the cross. God has an unconditional love for your life. The Bible says no height, no depth, no width, no, 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 no breath. Nothing can separate us from the unconditional, never-ending love of God. Bible says that he first loved you before you ever loved him. And by receiving his gift of righteousness, you are now fully and freely forgiven and counted as right before him. You're pleasing to God. However, what obedience does do is it continues to draw you closer in intimacy with, with him. And that's the goal, isn't it? The goal is that every day we'd become more intimate more close, more connected with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to read you one more scripture. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 through 6, listen to the words of John. Now by this we know that we know him. Listen, now by this we know that we know him. That word know, it's, it's an intimate knowledge. John says, do you want to know that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know him. If we keep his commands, if we love and honor and serve him through doing the things that honor and serve him, if we keep his commands. He who says, I know him, but doesn't keep his commandments, is a liar. The truth is not in him. Strong words from John. He says, if you say you're in intimate, close proximity, relationship with Jesus, and yet you disregard everything he's asked you to do and you don't honor and serve him in your life, that, that's not true. That, that intimacy is, is an, it's an illusion. He goes on and says in verse 5, but whoever keeps his word truly, the love of God is perfected in him. Whoever keeps the commands of, of, of Jesus, God's love and the intimate relationship you have, it, it grows and becomes more and more complete. He who says he abides in him ought also himself walk as Jesus walked. We, we love and we honor and we serve Jesus in obedience. Obedience is not optional, but it is voluntary. It comes out of the deepest place of our heart that says, God, I don't have to do this. I long to and I desire to follow you. And how do we do that? We do that by the help of the Holy Spirit. My, my prayer as we continue this journey is that by the help, by the empowerment, by the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit, that we'd be able to live in the will, the ways, the word of God and love Jesus in obeying Jesus.